nice spiced apple. All right, guys. So welcome back to the Unnatural Thoughts podcast. I'm Shannon. We're here with Josh and Ben. Jared is stuck at work tonight. Uh, he may be able to zoom in from his phone here in a little bit uh, if he gets the message soon. But we're here to talk about some recent uh, deaths. Uh, officially, they aren't being considered murders, even though I, I think we're pretty much all in agreement that it's it's the uh, it, it, it's a serial killer, another serial killer. Speaking of which, the cardinal killer which was our first podcast uh he has been identified um i we will probably do a short video on him tomorrow before our mm. ghost podcast um but about 50 percent of the profile that we gave was accurate on him so I, i'm pretty i'm pretty proud of that yeah uh there were some big things that we got wrong but for the most part the psychological profile was damn near perfect mm -hmm. so uh but today we're discussing uh we're going to start with the first known victim and that's uh Jelani Day. Uh, ben, have you heard anything about Jelani Day? Uh, just what you guys have uh, shared with me um, via Messenger. Okay. So Jelani Day was a Illinois State University uh, graduate. <laughs> so he's in your guys' neck, neck of the woods. I'm going to ISU right now. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Uh uh, he he lived in Bloomington, from Bloomington and everything, Illinois. Uh, he was from Danville. He was from Danville, okay. Um, he was found in the Illinois River on September 4th of this year. Uh, he went missing on August 24th. Uh, he was six foot two, 180 pounds, uh, and a 25-year-old black man. Now, the next victim, and from this point forward, that's what they are to me. They are victims. Victims. Uh, because there's just too many similarities in these to be considered coincidence or to yeah. be considered suicide. Uh, the next victim was a 25-year-old black male, LaDante D. Ely. Uh, he was five foot five, 145 pounds, found in Effingham, uh, the Little Wabash River in Effingham on September 18th. And he was likely dead 10 to 12 days. Uh, he was released from jail, the St. Louis County Jail September 2nd. And last seen in Granite City, Illinois. Uh, he was from Dayton, Ohio, and uh, recently attended community college. After that... The next victim was Inaki Baskarin, who's from Lakewood. Uh, he was found in Lakewood, Illinois. He attended the University of Illinois. He was a, a white male, 23 years old, 165 pounds, five foot nine. Uh, he went missing on October 30th, 2021, and was found in the Chicago River on November 5th, 2021. After that, we have uh, Garrett Winston James Walker uh, of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, who is a white male, 20 years old, 5'8", 160 pounds, uh, a University of Alabama student, went missing on November 7th, 2021, and was found in Black Warrior River, 11-9-2021. Now, here's the thing about this. Uh, Jelani Day, who was last seen in Bloomington, Illinois, um, 
it's a three hour and two minute drive between Bloomington and Granite City uh, slash St. Louis. They're so, so close together, they might as well just be one city uh, mm. where LaDante was picked up. Uh, after that, it's an hour and 34 minute drive to Effingham where LaDante was found. And then from Effingham to Lakewood, Illinois, it's four hours and seven minute drive where Anaki Baskarin was found. And then from Lakewood to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, it's an 11 hour, 10 minute drive. Uh, and that's where Garrett Walker was found. Um, and so far, all four of these cities, my wife actually turned me on to this information. Uh, she's the one that brought uh, all four of these victims to my attention and even connected the cities by way of a company called Arrive Logistics who, all, who have uh, service centers in each one of these cities. So first, before I give my what little bit of a profile I was able to bring up, because this is, for the most part, unheard of. The only time, the only other time I've found where a serial killer has uh, drowned his victims, which we don't know if they were drowned or not. Uh, it could even be likely they were murdered before drowned, uh, but there was so little uh evidence on the remains and the remains were so severely deteriorated that it's hard to determine the cause of death uh, but most people who murder via drowning are either husbands who are drowning their wives or mothers who are drowning their children uh, so that tells me right there that this killer likely didn't drown the victims mm -hmm. he likely killed them off site and then dumped their bodies there is one killer who I recently looked uh, saw I forget his name but he uh, abducted his victims tortured and raped them before killing them and dumped their bodies in rivers he was apprehended uh, that sounds kind of like what might be going on here. So what are your guys' thoughts on this? Well, I know a little bit on the Jelani Dave case. <clears throat> he grew up in Danville, went to school at Illinois State in Bloomington, which is a two-hour drive maybe. Uh and then is found in the Illinois River, an hour north of uh, Illinois State, in an area he didn't know. <coughs> and it doesn't make sense for him to go up there. Even on the basis, like they're saying, yeah, he went up there possibly to go swimming. Doesn't make sense. You've got uh, Clinton Lake, Lake Bloomington, uh, Evergreen Lake. There's so many other lakes to Bloomington. If he wants to go swimming. Right. Rivers too. They're galore all over down here. Plenty of options. So it doesn't make sense for him to go that far away if it was just to go for a swim. Beyond that, his car was parked in an in an area to be hidden. It was not out in the open. And it was found a couple uh, within a couple days of his body, wasn't it? Yeah, I believe it was about, I want to say it was about a week, maybe a little less than a week before his body was found, his car was found. Uh, I believe his clothes were found in the car. So there again, like, I mean, unless he's going swimming nude, you know, right. hey, go skinny dipping, that's fine, whatever. But why would you? And his car wasn't along the side of the river. Right. Uh, there's too many pieces that say he didn't do this to himself. Right. And I don't know that much with the other cases. 
but the amount of bodies being found in rivers and waterways right now is insane. Right. Uh, they just found a, what was that? That three-year-old that went missing. They found her in the uh, 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 an access pond for a farm. Uh, and I, the worst part with that one is the guy that did it was caught a couple days before the body was found in St. Louis. Okay. So I don't know what's going on with that one since, but I think they're back on the lookout for him. Right. Now, Jared brought up an interesting point. He thought it might be the work of the smiley face killer that's in New York. Uh, however, I looked up his victims and they were all white males. Same general age range, uh, which makes me think we might have a copycat on our hands but I don't think it's the smiley face killer. It may be someone of a similar mindset though. Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely agree with that. First question I have is how come Elizabeth's not on this with podcast with us? She, this was a brilliant find. She's very introverted. She's very private. <laughs> she, I understand. Yeah, she, she doesn't like being on video. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's an amazing find on her yeah. part, but I mean, my gut says these are dump sites. These are not, this is not where a dude jumped off a bridge and drowned himself or something like that. These, these feel like calculated. And as you were saying, um, the possibility of at least someone like uh, the Golden State Killer or uh, Edward Edwards or as you were saying, you know, by this traveling serial killer, right. right? He must, he probably has some kind of job where he travels long haul, um, you know, that gives him access to being in and out of these areas in no time. Right. Would be my gut. Absolutely. And the fact, the two black males, uh, mm -hmm. and I, I mentioned that because it is important. Uh, when profiling a serial killer. Yep. Uh, the two black males who were found were both 25 years old. They did somewhat resemble each other. I'm not, I'm not trying to be um, racist in that, but they do. You look at their pictures, they do somewhat resemble each other. And the two white guys also tend to resemble each other quite a bit. Um. Both have brown hair, uh, same size, were, uh, just about, same build. Uh, one was five foot nine, the other one was five foot eight. Uh, the five, one who was five foot eight was 160 pounds, the one who was five foot nine was 165 pounds. Uh, the smaller of the two was 20 years old, the other one was 23. Uh, the two black males were both 25. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's too much to be a coincidence. Was this the one where you posted the stuff about, uh, one of them missing teeth? Yep. The, uh, was found possibly in his stomach. Uh, so that was which... LaDante, uh, Ely. Uh, they, at first the medical examiner, uh, they weren't able to find his teeth. And then during the autopsy, they found them. Um, it didn't say where they found them, but most likely is in his stomach. Now, did uh, they... that'd be the only way for teeth to hide? Yeah, during... yeah, exactly. Right. What uh, did they say anything after the autopsy about cause of death with that one? Uh, right now, it's being ruled uh, drowning. Uh, however, let me bring this up real quick. Uh, That's only, but you know what that. Right away, that says to me that uh, they found water in the lungs, right? Which would say that this person was still alive at the time they went into the water, but it doesn't necessarily... Not, not necessarily. Uh, let me see. All right, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, as you can see here, uh, there is no definite, definitive test to determine that a death was caused by drowning, said mm. Dr. Jonathan L. Arden. 
Um, while medical examiners can find fluid in someone's lungs, the tests only show that the person was in the water. And then if we go to the website, I, I hate these bars at the top. Wow. Of the oh, I know. You can wait forever for the ads to go away. Yeah. <sighs> Once again, a contained area such as a bathtub or pool is more manageable. But when the death takes place in a lake or the ocean, it becomes tricky, uh, said the first sergeant, Mike Berry. Uh, 1987, Berry started underwater criminal investigators, which trains police departments around the world to recover evidence from the deep. Um, and I'll, ju I'll just let you guys read this. Uh, people who are watching this right now, feel free to pause. I'll scroll down here in just a minute. And you can continue reading. Uh, Arden said it would be hard to kill an adult by drowning without leaving behind clues from the struggle. Uh, it's up to the investigators to find those clues. Uh, but here's the website right here. Uh, it's on NBC News. And if you just uh, type in how do medical examiners determine drowning, it's the first link there. Mm. So. So it doesn't, so they, they can't necessarily determine that these people died from drowning. But if they go, like if any of them were too badly decomposed, they'll end up going to a forensic anthropologist, right? Yeah. Wouldn't they, where they'll look at the bones and figure out if there were any wounds prior to entry to the water, I guess? Well, see, water... I mean, water has a way of uh, destroying a lot of evidence. I yeah. Know that much. Yeah. It's very difficult. To, and I just looked it up in my forensics book. There is no information on water forensics in there or drowning or anything like that. Mm. So that's, uh, it's going to be a difficult one to determine. That's for sure. Um, the fact that these were all college students, all between the age of 20 and 25, and they all pretty much share a similar build and size. Um, that, that tells me a lot uh, so what first, Ben, what does it tell you about the killer? I, I think it, it tells me that this is a, a, a crime. These are crimes of opportunity. I don't, I don't know that these guys necessarily were particularly stalked or um, anything <laughs> beforehand. It feels like they were like th there. Um, and my, my gut is telling me that I, I feel like if this guy, if, if these crimes are related, this guy's like a long haul trucker delivery type person, all of these people are, all of the victims are students. So I would start looking at delivery companies that deliver exclusively to universities and things like that, either vending companies or any of those kinds of things, people who would be regularly delivering um, to those kinds of uh, locations and being in interacting with people of that age range right uh josh what's it tell you i don't know i was just looking something up real quick because i was curious to know what kind of fish are in the rivers mm. where the bodies are being dumped whoever's doing it i think has an has a strong idea of carnivorous fish in those waters. Gar, black bass, walleye, pike. These are all meat eaters. Okay. Uh, hmm. The idea being that they don't really want to be caught or found. And by throwing them into these specific waters, uh, the fish will decompose and eat that body faster than we'll probably find them. So I was trying to look up a little bit more about what all's in the Illinois River. I know gar is very predominant down south. And those could gobble up a, somebody in a 
probably a couple days oh, yeah. if they hung around it long enough. Uh, the Illinois River, though, and the amount of fish up here that could eat and decompose a body quick enough like that is actually pretty minimal. Uh, I think the best chance would be between walleye pike and sturgeon. Uh, but even then, it might be a stretch. Uh, now, the Illinois River has been toxic up until recently. Uh, and I don't know that much about at the Effingham area or down by St. Louis, but uh, I think they're putting them in uh, bodies of water that they know the body's going to decompose faster than normal. <laughs> what, what kind of fish? So, are, what kind of fish are in the Mississippi River, though? Because that's <laughs> one thing that stumped me is. He he took um, he took uh, Ladante from Granite City, which is right on the Mississippi River. You would think if he wanted to get rid of a body and not have it found, that would be one that he because it goes all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. It would take that body all the way down to the Gulf, and it'd never be found. So you're saying why would he take him where the, where he was found, right? Right to Effingham. Because I but think it, dropping him that close to a city like St. Louis could risk the body being found quickly. Okay. All right. The Mississippi's very active. It's well traveled, right? The Mississippi yeah. is a pretty. Yeah. So I I don't think he wants it. Like I said, I don't think he wants to be found. Yeah. Uh, so he wouldn't dump it in the Mississippi where the body could come up too quickly. Okay. By dumping it in Effingham or some other areas, it gives him more time to move on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, real quick, before I go over my short little small profile, since we don't really have a whole lot of background to follow, uh, follow uh, with this route and very little details to go off of. Uh, I'm gonna share with you guys my screen again and show you the company that Liz found. Uh, for those of you watching, Liz is my wife. Uh, she is a criminal justice major as well as a nursing major. Um, she has her nursing license uh, and her associates in criminal justice. So she's been kind of interested in this stuff as well. And she found this uh, company that links all four cities. And I'll go ahead and share that with you guys. It's Arrive Logistics. Um, they ship all over. And of course, companies like this are going to have sales and marketing representatives. It's a must. Someone, uh, not necessarily the drivers of these freight uh, vehicles or whatever. Uh, these are going to be college graduates uh, who are actually making a white collar career out of it. Someone who travels between the cities uh, to meet with the uh, different locations. Here's some of the careers on here. Huh. So it's likely we're looking at, it's, let me, let me uh, switch up a minute. It's unlikely that the killer is one of the delivery drivers. They just simply wouldn't have the time to uh, needed in order to do an act like this. Um, Delivery drivers are usually on a very tight schedule. Um, so it's unlikely that it's a truck driver or anything like that. So it's uh, more likely that he's a sales rep or a marketing rep for the company 
or a similar company that does business in the same areas. Uh, this was only one company that my wife found that connects all four. Uh, So I'm going to say, given that um, the smiley face killer mainly targeted white males in New York, um, I'm going to say this isn't likely the same uh, unsub that's committing those murders. Uh, it's more likely that he's a 25-year-old college graduate. And I say 25 because the uh, first two victims were 25. Uh, the others were a little bit younger. Uh, but as we know from psychology and other serial killers, um, the brain stops developing around the age of 25. So that's when most serial killers start uh, engaging in their criminal activity is around the age of 25 or shortly thereafter. Uh, that's also the age in which adults can actually be diagnosed with uh, psychological disorders. Um, I'm gonna say that he's mixed, likely comes from a uh, family with one black parent and one white parent, simply because there's two black victims, two white victims. Um, but I'm not going to discount a white male either. Uh, I think it would be just as likely for the unsub to be a white male. Uh, he's likely between five foot five and six foot tall, uh, between 160 and 170 pounds. Originally, I thought he would be on a little bit of a smaller side, um, uh, given that, uh, Dante was attacked in the face. Uh, but then I realized all four of these guys are on the smaller side. So he's going to have, uh, he's going to need something to kind of equal it. Uh, if he were to take him down, it would be through blitz attack. So he wouldn't necessarily need to be on the smaller side um, because smaller guys are a lot more wiry. Um, a lot more violent when they get into fights because they have to be because they're the smaller guy. Um, I'm going to say he was likely a sales representative or marketing rep, possibly for Arrive Logistics or another similar company. Uh, he travels a lot, likely inspired by the smiley face killer. Um, I think he might be attention seeking though, an attention seeking sadist. Uh, I don't think he wanted the bodies to be um, uh, deteriorated uh, like Josh, like you said, uh, because the rivers that they were found in were so small compared to like the Mississippi and other more likely uh, more formidable waters where it would have been easier for him to get rid of uh, a body. Um, but so far, that's all I really have on him, because, like I said, we know so little about the cases. Um, mm -hmm. We don't know all the information of what the autopsy has found and all that stuff. And there could be more victims out there that just haven't been found yet or haven't been uh, really linked to these other four. I'd be curious. To know. I know Jelani Day was in speech pathology but i'd be curious to know what the <clears throat> the other college students were studying um they were in completely different uh, courses because i didn't look that up i just did not type it uh write it down i forgot to but they were in completely different fields of study okay yeah because part of me was wondering if maybe he had a vendetta towards a certain maybe he tried to go to college for something and 
failed miserably and has a vendetta towards some towards a specific area. But if they're in different courses, then right, that kind of takes that one out. But I I still stand by. I I don't think he wants the bodies found quickly, but he does want them found. Uh, because it would have been just as easy for him to go to from Bloomington to the Mississippi if that were the case and dump the bodies, dump all everything into the Mississippi. He wasn't that far at any point right. for any of those to go into the Mississippi. Right. <laughs> so I still think that he was he's hoping for enough decomposition to keep his method of murder uh, silent. So, I, think, I, I think I'll agree with that. Uh, so by putting it into the smaller rivers, there's less of a chance for it to be found. Decomposition can happen. And then just enough of the body will be found that he can still go and do what he needs to do because people are going to pay more attention towards Oh, he's he's a shooter. All right. Well, I'll watch more people with guns. Oh, he's a stabber. All right, I'm watching for knives. You know, so by covering up how he's killing them, it's giving them just enough space to be able to continue to commit those murders. Oh, I'll, I'll agree with that. Cool. I, yeah. I think that's a good blend of both of our theories. Um, ben, what are your thoughts? Uh, to, be, to be honest with you, I think um, looking at what we've got, uh, if I was an actual profiler, I'd be like, I don't have enough to, to, to sort of go off of. I'd love to know, you know, how long have these bodies been dead? You know, do, have they been able to track a, a time of death or even a date of death so we know how many days prior to the body being found was the body killed, in which case we could actually determine along that route the likelihood of it being the same person. Well, LaDante, um, they say, was likely dead 10 to 12 days. And he was the second victim or yeah. third? He was second. the second. Second. And the first victim was where? Uh, the first victim was in Bloomington, Illinois. And that was Jelani, yep. right? Yeah. Yep. And he was in, and how far away is the, was the second victim from the first? Uh, let me bring this up real quick. Well, uh, it's, a, it's a three hour, two minute drive. Jelani was found up near Peru, Illinois, which is about an hour north of Bloomington. Do they know okay. how long he was dead? No. Mm. Uh, that I do believe they said it had to have been at least two weeks, I think. Okay. But I'm not 100% certain on that. But I mean, right there, even if we just ballpark two weeks, that sets at least the first two very clearly could be the same person right away. Right. Yeah. Um, and then we could just go down the line from there to, to sort of see. Um, I still, I don't know, I still kind of like the idea of it being a trucker or a del uh, like a delivery person only because I know uh, having had friends who, who long haul truck drive, uh, they will often stay where they where they drive to in a motel if they want to save money they'll sleep in the back of the cab um, but they'll often at least spend one night or two depending on where they are uh, dropping stuff off before they pick up another load and go again so sometimes that to me could give them opportunity especially if they're dropping stuff off or exchanging vending items at a university that's an easy place for them to pick a victim, hang out in their truck and, you know, offer drugs, offer party, whatever. And, you know, something like that. It, that's just sort of where my, my mind goes with it. Right. But, yeah. But then you've got cases like Jelani's. How does this vehicle wind up an hour north of Bloomington? Now that's a good question. That's yeah. true. Well, it, it, yeah. yeah Cause that would have, had to have been taken there you know, by whoever yeah. took care of him, right? So you would almost figure that if somebody did kill him, the chances are it was somebody Jelani knew. 
Yeah. Yep, you're probably right there. Somebody at least that he trusted. Yeah. Well, it'll be, I, I'll say this, it'll be really interesting to keep an eye on this one and to maybe do a revisit, um, you know, in a, in a couple of months and sort of see, or even a, in a month, it, things change pretty quick, right? Yeah. And well, I will say the family is offering a reward to anyone uh, who comes up with, uh, who, or, who, or who leads them to uh, us. Uh, the killer so uh, i'm i'm not really worried about that because i i mainly yeah. do this for fun at this point but i mean yeah fun, exactly this yeah. this well, seeing as how i go to isu i hear about it almost every day you must yeah but uh yeah they his case specifically, I don't know much about the other three, but his case specifically is way too out there to be even considered a suicide attempt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, even if this isn't a serial killer situation, uh, his specifically, there's something else to it. Whether the police know, which I... I don't think the police know too much anyway. And they're being bound by what they do know. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the family coming after them saying, no, you need to find out more. You need to find out more. You need to find out more. Well, there's only so much we have. Yeah, exactly. You know, at some point, it's going to just be left an open case or we're just going to mark it drowned and close it. Yeah. Uh, if there's just not enough information now this could be given the fact that we're categorizing it as serial killer uh there could be more information that comes up later in other bodies mm -hmm. when he slips up and when that happens then we can look back at the jelani day case and go okay this makes sense yeah right yeah. exactly yeah, that's totally. Yeah, that's but why I don't. I don't expect Jelani Day's case to ever actually be solved. I think it's going to go down as an open case, or they're just going to finally mark it suicide and or ground, and close it. Or maybe it'll wind up in twenty years being solved by a cold case detective. <laughs> now, Jelani Day's space parents. television. Twenty yeah. <laughs> days. Parents have hired a private investigator to look into this. Have they? Yeah. It'll be yeah. interesting to find out what they find out. Yeah. So real quick before we end this, uh, I'm going to bring up the information on these four uh, victims that we've been discussing today. Uh, I'm going to share my screen, and we'll just let the viewers see all the information that I've collected, uh, so that they can. Uh, I don't know, maybe research it a little bit further on their own. Nice. Uh, let's see here. Dude, he was 6'2", 180 pounds. Yeah. He was a tall dude. done before uh, the St. Louis uh, victim um, but it does indicate it, it shows St. Louis on there so it shows yeah you know it shows the vicinity for sure yeah 
they're not far from each other at all. No. And then here's my profile. So do you guys have anything to add before we close? I don't really have anything else. It all looks pretty good. And yeah, I'm good we'll, on this one. We'll see what happens. Just keep an eye on, I would say, especially Illinois. I don't know. Maybe yeah. Tuscaloosa is just that odd one that just happens to mix. Yeah. It does seem but, like the, the large numbers in Illinois. Oh, yeah. man. They're pulling bodies out almost every day. They're pulling a body out of water around here. Wow. All right. So thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I'm Shannon with Josh and Ben. This has been the Unnatural Thoughts Podcast. One, one more thing. Sorry, Shannon. One more thing real quick. Uh, I just want to add in there. What else are we ex supposed to expect when our governor looks like a descendant of Al Capone? Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I've got the sign. I've got the sign out out in front of my house. Uh, Prisker sucks right in front of my house. So, <laughs> so uh, maybe hey. he's our truck driver. <laughs> <laughs> that could start some. I told you to get the vaccine. <laughs> All right. Before we get into political stuff, I'm going to go ahead and end this. <laughs> uh, so thanks for tuning in, guys. And we'll see you tomorrow when we discuss ghosts nice. on the Unnatural Thoughts podcast. All right. Hi, I'm S.M. Cornthwaite. There's a creepy new book series out for the young one in your life or the young at heart. Check out Hollow Scream's Day of the Dolls and Hollow Scream's Ghost House, now available on Amazon. Read them together. These tales are thrillers. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Give us a like, leave a comment below, and please share the video with your family and friends. I've been Shannon, and this has been Psychology of the Unknown.